Hi boys, it's Grandma, and I am going to do some more reading for you. I found a bunch of wonderful books, and I have some picked out for each one of you. And I'm going to start with Baby Finnegan. Here is a book for you, Finn, from Grandma, and it is called Good Night Moon. Are you ready? Good Night Moon. In the great green room, there was a telephone and a red balloon and a picture of the cow jumping over the moon. And there were three little bears sitting on chairs and two little kittens and a pair of mittens and a little toy house and a little young mouse. Can you find it? Good night, room. It's night, night time. Good night, moon. Good night, cow, jumping over the moon. Good night, light and the red balloon. Good night, bears. Good night. Cheers. Good night, clocks, and good night, socks. Good night, little house. Good night, mouse. Good night, comb, and good night, brush. Everything's going good night. Good night, nobody. And good night, mush. And good night, the little old lady, whispering hush. Hush. Good night, stars. Good night, air. Good night, noises everywhere. And good night, Ben. This is Good Night Moon, and I hope you like it. Hi, Shikovan. It's Grandma, and I have some books for you. One is called Head and Shoulders, Knees and Toes, and it is a song. So you can sing it with me. Are you ready? Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, and eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. That's a fun one. You can practice and you can show me next time. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. I have another book for you, Shakovan, called The Going to Bed Book. Maybe Shy and Savante can read this to you when it's night, night time. Let's see what it says, The Going to Bed Book. The sun has set not long ago. What are these gun animals going to do? The sun's gone down, it's getting dark. Now everybody goes below to take a bath in the one big tub with soap all over. Scrub, scrub, scrub. You take a bath at night, nine times sometimes. <gasps> they hang their towels on the wall. Does everybody hang up their towels? That's very good. And find pajamas, big and small. Getting your pajamas on, that's a good thing to get ready for night, night. With some on top and some beneath, they brush and brush and brush their teeth. Brush your teeth. And when the moon is on the rise, they all go up. <gasps> and exercise! I don't know if that's a good idea right before night-night, but that's what the animals are doing. And down once more, but not so fast. They're on their way to bed at last. The day is done. They say good night. 
and somebody turns off the light. The moon is high, the sea is deep. They rock and rock and rock to sleep. You like rocking to sleep, it's nice. And then, after you go night night, when you wake up in the morning, here's another book called Peek a Hoo. Let's see, Peek a Hoo. Peek a Hoo, let's see what the owl is doing. Oh, peek a, what do you think is there? <gasps> moo, peek a moo, see the cow goes moo. <gasps> peek a, boo, peek a boo, look at the ghost. Peek a, zoo, peek a zoo, look at all the animals. <gasps> peek a, Choo choo! See the trains? Choo choo choo! Peek a you! If you look in the book, you'll see a reflection because it's like a little mirror. Peek a who? Peek a you. So it's your cove on. Those are your books. Peek a who? The going to bed book and. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. And eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Isn't that fun? Hi, Sequavion. Grandma's got a book for you today. It's right here. It's a very cool book, and it is called The Boo Hoo Bird. Now, you have to be careful with this book because it has paper pages. Be careful not to rip and tear them, to look at them nicely and treat the book nicely. Let's see if you can do it. Ready? The Boo Hoo Bird. There he is, Boo Hoo Bird. I wonder what's going to happen to him. Bird and Raccoon were enjoying a game of catch when Bird got bonked on the head. Oh dear. Ouch, moaned Bird. That hurt a lot and he started to cry. <laughs> he got bonked on the head. It hurt. Oh no, said Raccoon. I've wounded Bird. <gasps> Here, I'll kiss and make it better. Raccoon kissed Bird's bonk. Bird kept crying. It still hurts. I'm sorry, said Raccoon. Let's go see if Rabbit can help. Raccoon told Rabbit what happened. Poor Bird, said Rabbit. Would a big hug help? Rabbit gave Bird a big hug. Bird cried some more. It's not helping. Let's go find Beaver, said Rabbit. He will know what to do. What you need is a cookie, said Beaver. You can fix any problem with a cookie. Beaver gave Bird a cookie. Bird cried louder. I think I'm getting dizzy. Let's ask Sheep what to do, said Beaver. She's full of ideas. Beaver showed Bird's boo-boo to Sheep. How about a game of hide and seek, suggested Sheep. The animals ran and hid. You want me to hide, said Bird. I can hardly walk. Surely Fox can make you feel better, said Sheep. He's clever. Bird got bonked on the head, Sheep told Fox. He's quite upset. What you need is a Band-Aid, said Fox. He disappeared into his den and came back. Band-Aids always make my boo-boos feel better. Fox put the Band-Aid on Bird's head. The band-aid on there. You have band-aids on your boo-boos sometimes. The band-aid isn't working. Boo -hoo -hoo, cried Bird. Oh, he still hurt. He is sad. Boo -hoo -hoo, cried Bird's friends together. Nothing is making Bird feel better. Ah, they all cried and cried. Bird looked at his friends and he felt his bonk. 
it didn't really hurt anymore. I think I'm okay now, he said, but his friends couldn't hear him. Ah, they're crying so loud. I said I'm all better now, shouted Bird. Oh my goodness. See? Bird stood on his head. He's all better. You're so silly, Bird, said the animals. They laughed and stood on their heads, too. Come on, said Bird, let's play catch. <gasps> all right, get out the ball, let's play catch. <gasps> Throw the ball. Bonk. Oh no. Bird got bonked in the head again. I think he better be careful with balls, don't you think so? Maybe he should not throw balls in the house. That would probably be a good thing for Bird. But I think he's all better now. Bye-bye. It's a great day. Grandma loves you. Hi, Andrew. I'm reading stories today, and I bought you a special book, and it is called If You Give a Moose a Muffin. Have you ever read this book before? There's a whole bunch of these things out, but I like If You Give a Moose a Muffin. What do you think will happen? Let's see. If You Give a Moose a Muffin. Not sure. Here's the house. If you give a moose a muffin, there he is, he'll want some jam to go with it. So you'll bring out some of your mother's homemade blackberry jam mm, out of the refrigerator. And when he's finished eating the muffin, he'll want another and another. And when they're all gone, he'll ask you to make more. You'll have to go to the store to get some muffin mix. And when he opens the door and feels how chilly it is, he'll ask to borrow a sweater. When he puts the sweater on, he'll notice one of the buttons is loose. He'll start sewing. The button will remind him of the puppets his grandmother used to make. So he'll ask for some old socks. And he'll make some sock puppets. Hmm. When they're done, he'll want to put on a puppet show. He'll need some cardboard and paints. And then he'll ask you to help him make the scenery. Oh, that sounds fun, making scenery for the puppet shows. When the scenery is finished, he'll get behind the couch, but his antlers will stick out. So you'll bring him a sheet from your bed. When he sees the sheet, he'll remember he wants to be a ghost for Halloween. And he'll try it on and shout, boo! It'll scare him so much, he'll knock over the paints. So he'll use the sheet to clean up the mess. Then he'll ask for some soap to wash it out, and he'll probably want to hang the sheet up to dry. He'll go outside to put it on the clothesline, and when he's out in the yard, he'll see your mother's blackberry bushes. Mm -hmm. Seeing the blackberries will remind him of the jam. He'll probably ask you for some, and chances are, if you give him the jam, he'll want a muffin to go with it. And the story will start all over again. So remember, Andrew, if you give a moose a muffin, what might happen? Hope you like the book. I love you. See you later. Hi, Ethan, it's Grandma. I have a book with big words in it for you today. Some of these words I think you probably already know, but I think you might learn some new words, and you might even learn how to read some of these words. They are big. Are you ready? Here we go. I know some big words. I'll teach them to you. Although you are small, you can use big words too. Let's see what we have to say. Big words for little people. I know some big words, and I'll teach them to you. Although you are small, you can use big words, too. Big words aren't scary. They're big, fun to learn. I was taught once. 
and now it's your turn. If you need some time to just be alone for doing weird dancing to sit as a stone, if someone is there and you need to pee and then say loud and clear, hey, I need privacy. There's a privacy. You need to be by yourself a little bit. When mommy can't fasten the brand new car seat and the twins don't like what they got to eat, this is impossible. Mom says to us, please, we can't leave for school till you help find the keys. If you answer right when you spell a big word, your teacher might shout, stupendous, superb. Here's another word, disappear. Gracefully. Yo. Look what they're doing here. And then you can celebrate. Laugh and have fun because you've worked really hard to get the job done. When you are at school and you get into trouble for chewing your gum and then exploding a bubble and you stay inside when your friends get to play, your consequence is no recess that day. So this person had a consequence because they didn't do what they were supposed to. When dad takes us shopping to buy new shoes and all of us shout, this is one I choose, and the salesman looks angry and he's pretty irate. Dad wants us all to behave and cooperate. When something is perfectly right for your age, like TV and music and Toys of the Rage, when a G-rated movies are the ones that you should seek, appropriate is the word mom will speak. Appropriate. But many things are too old for you. That's lots of your friends may still get to do. Inappropriate is the word our mom picks if you want to watch PG-13 when you're six. Inappropriate. When you wait and you wait for your chance at a turn and your feet are both hot and are starting to burn and there's still a long way to the front of the line, patience is the word you must try to find. Have you ever been in a line that long, Ethan? It takes a lot of patience to wait. Mixing stuff up from the kitchen to drink that looks really gross and has a big stink as our green snotted brother's nose starts to get picked. Disgusting! You'll cry, it means yucky and ick. Disgusting. To understand means you know when we say a street is for cars, it's not safe to play. You understand cows make milk and not juice, that you don't run on duck, but you do run on goose. So understand. Inconsiderate is the word dad would pick if you woke up mom when she's feeling sick. But if your brother but if you brought her a flower, I got the word wrong. But if you brought her a flower and tea, a considerate person is what he would see. I'm responsible, you say, when you pick up your toys and walk our dog Leo and try not to make noise. Responsible people try not to forget to water mom's bonsai or the table to set. Persevere is to try and to try, even though you might want to give up and cry. When doing a puzzle that puzzles your mind, you persevere till the right piece you find. Different means nobody's ever the same. All bodies are different and so are all brains. Different is what makes this world so great. Different is never something to hate. But not all big words are as long as the rest. There are three, though short, that I love the best. Family is where we all belong, keeping us safe, making us strong. Family is yours no matter whatever. We care about you forever and ever. Respect is the way we all treat each other, mother to father and father to mother, brother to sister, sister to brother and brother and sister and sister and brother. Look at 
this page, you turn it a different way. Love is the biggest big word of all. Four little letters that help you walk tall. Love is your family, your siblings, your friends. Love is your ocean without an end. See? Big words are easy. How well you've done. Now go off and have some really great fun. And next time a grown-up thinks you don't have sense, show them big words. Your intelligence. Intelligence. Look at that. So that's your book, Ethan, of big words for little people. I hope you like it. I'll put it right here. Bye. Hi, Shy. It's Grandma. I have got some books for you. I know you mentioned you liked Harry Potter. Well, I have bought you the whole set of Harry Potter books right here. I'm not going to read them all to you right now, but I'm going to take out the very first one and just read a little bit to get you started. This is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. If you're going to read the books, you ought to read them in order because they start from the very beginning when Harry was just young, maybe your age or younger. And then each book, Harry is a little older. It's the next year and the next year. So you need to start with this book, and it may take you several months to read the whole thing. Depends on how much time you spend reading each day. But you need to take care of all the other books, put them up where the dogs cannot chew and that the little boys cannot get at and tear so that by the time you're ready to read all the next books, they're still nice and in this case. And I'm going to have Mommy check to see how you're doing with that. They should be put up high and they should be not getting them down unless you're reading them. And when you're done reading, you put them up where your dog, Eva, cannot bite them and where the little boys cannot get them and tear them. All right? Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I'll only turn the book to face you if there's a picture to see. Otherwise, I'm just going to read a little bit to get you started. Chapter one is The Boy Who Lived. I wonder if that's Harry. There are 17 chapters and almost 300 pages in the first book. This is a lot of reading, but I know you're a good reader, and you might enjoy this. Maybe Mom can even read some out loud sometimes, or maybe Savante and you can read together. The Boy Who Lived, Chapter 1. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of Number 4, Pivot Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they didn't hold with such nonsense. Mr. Dursley was the director of a firm called Grunnings, which made drills. He was a big, beefy man with hardly any neck, although he did have a very large mustache. Mrs. Dursley was thin and blonde and had nearly twice the usual amount of neck, which came in very useful as she spent so much of her time craning over garden fences, spying on the neighbors. The Dursleys had a small son called Dudley, and in their opinion, there was no finer boy anywhere. The Dursleys had everything they wanted, but they also had a secret, and their greatest fear was that somebody would discover it. They didn't think they could bear it if someone found out about the Potters. Mrs. Potter was Mrs. Dursley's sister, but they hadn't met for several years. In fact, Mrs. Dursley pretended she didn't have a sister because her sister and her good-for-nothing husband were as undurlishish as possible. The Dursleys shuddered to think that the neighbors would say if the Potters arrived in the street. The Dursleys knew that the Potters had a small son, too, but they had never seen him. This boy was another good reason for keeping the Potters away. They didn't want Dudley mixing with a child like that. When Mr. and Mrs. Dursley woke up on the dull gray Tuesday our story starts, there was nothing about the cloudy sky outside to suggest that strange and mysterious things would soon be happening all over the country. Mr. Dursley hummed as he picked out his most boring tie for work and Mrs. Dursley gossiped happily as she wrestled screaming Dudley into his high chair. None of them noticed a large, tawny owl flutter past the window. At half past eight, Mr. Dursley picked up his briefcase, pecked Mrs. Dursley on the cheek, and tried to kiss Dudley goodbye, but missed, because Dudley was now having a tantrum and throwing his cereal at the walls. Little tyke, chortled Mr. Dursley as he left the house. He got into his car and backed out of Nemours Drive. It was on the corner of the street that he noticed the first sign of something peculiar. A cat reading a map. 
For a second, Mr. Dursley didn't realize what he had seen, that he jerked his head around to look again. There was a tabby cat standing on the corner of Pivot Drive. But there wasn't a map in sight. What could he have been thinking of? It must have been a trick of the light. Mr. Dursley blinked and stared at the cat, then it stared back. As Mr. Dursley drove around the corner and up the road, he watched the cat in his mirror. It was now reading the sign that said Privet Drive. No, looking at the sign. Cats couldn't be reading maps or signs. Mr. Dursley gave himself a little shake and put the cat out of his mind. As he drove toward town, he thought of nothing except a large order of drills he was hoping to get that day. But on the edge of town, drills were driven out of his mind by something else. As he sat in the usual morning traffic jam, he couldn't help noticing that there seemed to be a lot of strangely dressed people about. People in cloaks. Mr. Dursley couldn't bear people who dressed in funny clothes. The get-ups you saw on young people. He supposed this was some stupid new fashion. He drummed his fingers on the steering wheel and his eyes fell on a huddle of these weirdos standing close by. They were whispering excitedly together. Mr. Dursley was enraged to see that a couple of them weren't young at all. Why, that man had to be older than he was, wearing an emerald green cloak. The nerve of him! But then it struck Mr. Dursley that this was probably some silly stunt. These people were obviously collecting for something. Yes, that would be it. The traffic moved on, and a few minutes later, Mr. Dursley arrived at the Grunnings parking lot, his mind back on drills. Mr. Dursley always sat with his back to the window in his office on the ninth floor. If he hadn't, he might have found it harder to concentrate on drills that morning. He didn't see the owls swooping past in broad daylight, though people down on the street did. They pointed and gazed open-mouthed as owl after owl sped overhead. Most of them had never seen an owl, even at nighttime. Mr. Dursley, however, had a perfectly normal owl-free morning. He yelled at five different people. He made several important telephone calls and shouted a bit more. He was very in a very good mood until lunchtime when he thought he'd stretch his legs and walk across the road to buy himself a bun from the bakery. He'd forgotten all about the people in cloaks until he passed a group of the next to the bakers. He eyed them angrily as he passed. He didn't know why, but they made him uneasy. This bunch were whispering excitedly too, and he couldn't see a single collecting ten. It was on his way back that past them, clutching a large donut in a bag that he caught a few words of what they were saying. The Potters, that's right, that's what I heard. Yes, their son, Harry. Mr. Dursley stopped dead. F fear flooded him. He looked back at the whispers as if he wanted to say something to them, but thought better of it. He dashed back across the road, hurried up to his office, snapped at his secretary not to disturb him, seized his telephone, and had almost finished dialing his home number when he changed his mind. He put the receiver back down and stroked his mustache, thinking. No, he was being stupid. Potter wasn't such an unusual name. He was sure there were a lot of people called Potter who had a son called Harry. Come to think of it, he wasn't even sure if his nephew was called Harry. Harry, he'd never seen the boy. It might have been Harvey or Harold. There was no point in worrying Mrs. Dursley. She always got so upset at any mention of her sister. He didn't blame her. If he'd had a sister like that, all but the same those people in cloaks. And I'm going to stop right there on page five and let you continue reading Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And maybe mom can read it to you some out loud sometimes. And take care of your whole book collection. And I'm going to see how well you do with keeping things put up, not letting the dog chew on them, not letting the boys tear the pages, and keeping them nice so that you can read because these stories Aunt Rochelle read all of these books, and she really likes them, and uh, they're good. But it will take you a while to read, but it'll be fun. I love you, and enjoy all your Harry Potter books. Show. Hi, Savante. It's Grandma, and for Christmas this year, I got you some books. I know you love Diary of a Wimpy Kid, so I got you a collection of some more of the Diary of a Wimpy Kid books. They are hardbound copies. Um, they're very nice, and you need to keep them put up from the little boys and from your dogs so that they will stay nice and you can start your own little library here. We have Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Last Straw, Roderick Rules, The Do-It-Yourself Book, and Dog Days. So I'm just going to pick one. I think I will pick The Last Straw. Well, let's look at that first and see what it has to say. We'll just read one little part. 
verses to Tim. January. Okay, you could start reading this on New Year's Day after Christmas. January, New Year's Day. You know how you're supposed to come up with a list of resolutions at the beginning of the year to try to make yourself a better person? Well, the problem is it's not easy for me to think of ways to improve myself because I'm already pretty much one of the best people I know. So this year, my resolution is to try and help other people improve. But the thing I'm really finding out is that some people really don't appreciate it when you're trying to be helpful. Here he is telling somebody, I think you should work on chewing your potato chips more quietly. So there's a helpful suggestion. Uh, I don't know if that's really going to help for the new year to improve everyone else, but that's what it's going to start out to be. And I'm going to let you read the different sections there. Another part that I really think is cool is the do-it-yourself book. And this book has a lot of places where you can write your own. I know you've written stories, you've journaled a lot. Well, here is a place to keep some writings that will not fall apart or get lost because they're all in the book. Uh, they have questions for you. They have places where you can draw your own comics. So let's just look and see if some of the things that are in here. If you were going to be marooned for the rest of your life, what would you want to have with you? So here you could list which video games you would want to have if you were stuck on an island by yourself, what songs, what books, what movies. And this is, have you ever, have you ever gotten a haircut that was so bad that you needed to stay home from school? Yes or no? So you can check the boxes. There's some questions that you can read and talk about. Here's a make your own comic section. So you can actually draw and then write little blurbs. So you can kind of start making your own books a little bit. The first four laws you'll pass when you get elected president. So here you go. If you think you're, if you might be president, what are some things that you would have happen in the laws? What laws would you pass? So maybe you don't want to do the whole book. Maybe just parts of it at different times. But I thought you'd probably enjoy this. And I'll be happy to see maybe what you've written in here later on, maybe by next year. We'll see what you've done. So I hope you enjoy your Diary of a Wimpy Kid Do-It-Yourself book, your Diary of a Wimpy Kid Dog Days, Diary of a Wimpy Kid Roderick Rules, and Diary of a Wimpy Kid The Last Straw. Again, try to keep these nice. Put them up so that the dog can't get them or your little brothers can't get them, that they are well taken care of. And I think that you'll have a good time reading these. I love you. See you later, Savante. Test one, two.